footsteps of their hard rock heroes, Nickelback have sold 35 million records worldwide and counting. Putting aside their millions of fans for a moment, Nickelback are not universally admired. In fact, they could well be the most polarizing band on the planet. Unlike the grunge legends who predate them, Nickelback have never been cool, at least not in the eyes of their many detractors. They've been voted worst band in the world more than once. There are legions of anti-Nickelback web forums, sites and Facebook groups. Their music is described variously as formulaic, cliché, derivative, redneck, vulgar and knuckle drag. You know, it's kind of like, it, 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 it's this, this wave of, wow, it's kind of bitter, you know, it's just, it's a really, really hard pill to swallow. If the haters had their way, Nickelback would be dead and buried. Yet the band powers on outselling most cool bands by the truckload. So what is the key to Nickelback's ongoing success? How do they withstand the endless deluge of negativity and come out the other side friendly, well-adjusted and cashed up? Maybe it's as simple as knowing how to give the people what they want. Our fans haven't let us down yet, so why should we start letting them down? And maybe, just maybe, sometimes it's more important to be nice than cool. Awesome. Dude, that's awesome. Man, everyone says you're a serious. I'm, we're sitting here, I'm having fun. I hear all this serious band stuff, Who and then that? I get it so much. I'm reading all this stuff, and I'm thinking, right. serious, serious guy. Band that takes themselves so seriously. When it was finally released in November 2008, it debuted at number two on the Billboard Top 200 and stayed in the Top 200 for 50 weeks. Something in Your Mouth, the second single, again caused a feminist outcry and got them some more critical crucifixion. Still, it was number one on Billboard's mainstream rock chart. Critics be damned. Copping flack for taking themselves too seriously is barely the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the wholesale slamming of Nickelback. Chad and Mike Kruger in particular have borne the brunt of some overwhelming critical write-offs. When the first album hit and took off, all we heard from was from our fans, the people that liked us. And the record did very well. It had a big song on it called How You Remind Me, and, and uh, I think it probably did like 10 or 11 million copies worldwide, and we were all blown away. And we're like, yeah, this is great. You know, we're you know, finally where we want to be as a band. Now everybody knows who you are, and now you get to hear everybody's opinion. And the point I stopped listening to those guys was early on when, when we were... You know, nobody knew who we were and we weren't selling anything. And we were, you know, this really great band and everybody was kissing our ass. That's when I stopped listening because it's as, it's as, as ungenuine as it is to, to chop up somebody who's doing really well. And I, I don't think you can take it seriously. I've talked to people that are music critics that started as real music fans and they freely admit that they're not anymore. And they, they become jaded and so hard to impress and so unemotional about it now. So I think that can happen. I think that can happen really easily. And I think there's a big difference between being a music critic and a music fan. Because before you were just hearing about, just, just from your fans, it's all you get was just positive feedback. And then, you know, once everybody knows who you are, you realize, hmm, not everyone's going to like you. Um, and at first, you know, it's kind of like, wow, it's kind of bitter. You know, it's just, it's a really, really hard pill to swallow, thanks to our lovely friend, the Intraweb. Um, you actually get to see a lot of reviews of other people's bands, and a lot of critics saying awful things about everybody else, and you realize, wow, it's not just us. Uh, everybody hates everything on this planet. <laughs> they really do. So I'm glad we're not in this alone. Um, and, then, uh, and then you just move on, and, and uh, you meet somebody, and they shake your hand, and you shake theirs, and, and they say, hey, you got me through some tough times, you know, and, or, hey, you guys are our favorite band in the world, don't ever stop making music. And those things start to sink in, you know, and that really uh, helps solidify why you started doing this in the, in the first place.